it has happened dark matter episode 10 but don't listen to me i have nothing to tell you so basically i have a story about um one of the craziest things i've ever experienced in the paranormal and it goes way way back and i'm dating myself a little bit here you know i'm not a not as young as i used to be but uh many years ago back in 1998 some friends and I saw a movie called The Blair Witch Project, which I'm sure everyone who's watching this has also seen. And it inspired us to go out and look for whatever spooky things we could find. And at the time, I resided in northwest Wisconsin, so, you know, there's a lot of open area, a lot of creepy stuff out there. There was a cemetery we heard about for years that had a legend of, of many other weird instances happening there, and people claimed it was haunted as you know people do and we had decided to go and and poke around a little bit and back in those days video cameras were much different than now so we had one that had took the large video cassette um, camcorder and went off to the cemetery and uh, you know as, as a few of us we were respectful we weren't doing anything wrong and I was the one filming though this as you'll hear later is is a disputed fact but i definitely was the one filming and it had the kind where you had to had to stare through the the lens as you're as you're doing your thing you know i just filmed and there's a river or a creek running behind the cemetery so you know i was trying to catch that and and zoom in here and there on on whatever and whatever headstones that was all fine and dandy nothing really happened this was kind of dusk time and uh, we went back afterwards to my friend's house who kind of spurred on this location. He knew about it and whatnot. And uh, we popped in the tape and there was five or six of us. We were watching. I'm, uh, the, the, the camera's panning along the tree line and whatnot. And all of a sudden, and I swear to God, I swear on, on all everything and I'm using up my integrity card right now to tell you guys this story. There was, and I and I shit you not, a white woman, uh, a woman dressed in white, uh, very cliche, I know. She was kind of facing away from us, you know. I can I can kind of demonstrate like this. She was like this at this this angle, and she had she had hair that was like Farrah Fawcett-y. You know, it was a, like a dirty blonde shoulder length hair and it was kind of swooped at the sides on both sides. And she was just standing there staring into the tree line. I did not see this when I was filming through the viewfinder lens at the time. This was on the recording. I'm panning across and as I'm panning that shot of, with the creek line, she's, she's floating with the pan. And she was full color, absolute full color, like a person there. She's panning along, and there was a point in which I decided to zoom in on, on something, maybe trying to get the creek. It's hard to remember. This was 23 years ago. She turned her face as, as I'm zooming in. And when she turned her face, there were two black holes for eyes and one black hole for her mouth. And I zoomed, like, right into it. It was like this. We were watching this in, in a complete astonishment. Like, we are freaking out, oh my God, oh my God. All of us are having a cow. We start calling up other friends. I bet 50 people saw this. I, I, no lie. We had friends, our friends, girlfriends, everybody's like, what, oh my God, ah. It was stunning. Like, absolutely unbelievable. Like, uh, we caught a ghost. You know, and this is long before paranormal television you know, and all that stuff became popular. I didn't know what to do with it. You know, like, oh, oh my God, what the heck? So then comes, you know, a couple of days later and we watched that tape over and over like, oh my God, oh my God. And my friend who took us to the cemetery in the first place said to me, and I was, this was my tape, you know, it was mine, my tape. Well, I am taking it. And he's like, oh, wait, I can make copies. I know somebody that has a, a VHS recorder that makes copies or whatever. You know, you remember the ones with the, the two slots, you know, you could kind of rip movies or whatever. And 
you know, some of you might not. If you're young, you don't remember this, but begrudgingly, I was like, oh, okay, fine, you can, you can do that. And uh, a couple of days went by, perhaps, maybe only one day, I don't know. I called and called and called this dude, no answer, no answer. Well, it turns out his his parents were were doing things that they shouldn't do, and he was doing things he shouldn't do. I believe trafficking the devil's lettuce. The police had came and searched the house, and they took that tape. And according to him, they took that tape. I never saw that tape again. Well, let's just say that I never saw it again. It haunted me forever, and I continued to to be friends with this dude for a few years afterward. He got he got extremely strange and and weird and it's like when the occult goes bad you know that was this fella and uh, didn't see him for 20 years so fast forward all the way to now I've moved to New York and Amy and I are working together on this stuff and uh, you know I've told her this story and I she believes it you know I don't lie I don't lie I caught a, a full-bodied apparition of a female with all the detail there everything I'm telling you it was there it was there and it was crazy unbelievable and she was on film for you know two to three minutes did not disappear did not float away don't it we I was filming you know and I took the camera away and that's how the how the tape ended because I didn't see it as I was filming anyways flash forward 20 years to I'm gonna say last spring and I decided to try and find this dude. I hadn't talked to him since maybe 2000, 2001. No idea what became of him. I searched social media and lo and behold I find him. I find him on Twitter. I was sure it was the same guy as picture, recognized him, everything. He had also moved away from Wisconsin and I DM'd him and will display these messages that we had, but right in front of Amy in real time, all I asked him was, do you remember the tape? His response was was right in front of Amy. Oh, of course I remember the tape. And she audibly gasped. You know, he knew exactly what we were talking about. We, we reminisced a little bit through DM about, uh, about it. He remembers differently a little bit, a few of the details. He thinks he was filming. He was absolutely not filming, I was filming. And I believe this was so he could lay claim to ownership of this tape, which doesn't exist anymore, which could be in the possession of the sheriff's department. I hesitate whether to even call this particular sheriff's department. I know which one it would be. Um, and I may, you know, but it's like a needle in the haystack if I actually had it. I mean, this is, this is the greatest evidence that never saw the light of day. I've never seen anything like this before and I, I I don't know I hope I see something like it again I hope somebody can get something like that and I think it was the golden goose of the paranormal however we get to talking and stuff and and I want I wanted to document this and tell this story and I wanted him to tell part of it too and we exchanged phone numbers through DM on Twitter and uh, oof, I text him about proceeding further with telling the story in a little more detail so he could tell his part. I get a text message back saying, oh, sorry, so-and-so is dead. And I, I can't say his name because this got extra weird, like quick. So-and-so died a few days ago, which is absolutely not true. This dude did not die. He, uh, he just freaked out. I, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why, you know? I've lost contact with him, he's gone. All I have are these, these messages left behind. And the memories. Now the one difference between what he remembers about this apparition and what I remember is, he said when she turned and we saw the face where the eyes were, I remember them as, as you know, dark voids. He remembers them as like, like fuzzy television within those dark voids, like, you know, the old poltergeist. Of <laughs> He remembers the face was like twitching, which is, you know, a minor detail, but still. And when he said that, I, I seem to sort of remember something like that, but I, I'm not sure. But uh, the image of her standing with her back to us and kind of turned sideways will never, ever leave my mind. It's burned and ingrained inside of me. 
and uh, ever since then I've I've had a strong interest in the paranormal and obviously have gone full force into seeking my own answers. But that was a heck of a way to start. That was the first time I had ever grabbed a camera in pursuit of anything supernatural. Boy, if we succeeded, I could have quit right there. <laughs> yeah, very, very interesting. So if you guys have ever had anything similar or, or know anything, leave it down in the comments. We'd love to hear it. And I, I hope you enjoyed the story and maybe there'll be more to it. And also leave in the comments if you think I should try and reach out to that sheriff's department and tell them this crazy cockamamie story. And perhaps somewhere in evidence lies, in, the, in their evidence locker from 23 years ago, lies some of the greatest evidence I've ever seen caught on film. Uh, I can't reiterate enough, this is absolutely true. And Amy knows the apprehension I've had about telling the story with nothing to back it up but it's one of the most interesting things that's ever happened to me in, in doing this stuff. And uh, I, I can't say I've been investigating the paranormal nonstop since then, but I've, I've definitely had my eye towards it and did other investigations and, and things of that nature. I wouldn't call them investigations. It was more like, you know, hey, let's go find something spooky, you know? Back in the old days when it's all innocent and fun, before Paranormal TV kind of turned it into something else. It was like more pure and more, I don't know, for fun. And it still is fun, there's no doubt about it. Never seen anything like that. I wish I could show it to you all. I wish I could. That's, that's uh, you know, I think everybody has one big regret and one, one thing and me letting him keep that tape is my biggest regret in the paranormal because, man, you, you guys would be blown away. And it also begs the question, do, do uh, those old camcorders have any viability in the paranormal now? Like if I were to get my hands on one, could, was it, you know, how it was tuned to, to see through its, its lens and its aperture? Is that what helped this thing show itself? I, I don't know. Interesting side note, before I moved to New York, I had started another team back in Wisconsin and we actually got permission this time to go investigate that cemetery at night and there is a video of that with my old team and it was it was a creepy night so that, that place is definitely lit. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. Um, I don't know about investigating cemeteries and how truly respectful that is or not, but we definitely tried to do it in a way that wasn't that wasn't disrespectful to anyone that, you know, has loved ones there or whatnot. We just simply wanted to experience just like Amy and I do now. Uh, we didn't capture anything like that though, that we captured back in 98. Nothing of the sort. But uh, thanks for listening to the story, and uh, anything you guys want to contribute, leave down below. And uh, that's all I got. One thing to tell you. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, comment, hit the thumbs up, share it with your entire friends list. And of course, above anything else, stay weird.